started last football season where I predict all of the winners and losers in week one's matchups. So yes, we have finally returned to the NFL season and we are doing our week one pickups. So starting off this week, we have a Thursday night matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs. An absolute beauty of a game to start the season, I must say. I think that having the Super Bowl winner be in the first game usually does make for a nice, exciting matchup. We saw this three years ago uh, when we had the Bills and the Rams on opening night. Big, uh, stunning win by the Bills. Rams fell pretty flat in that game and then continued to be pretty lousy throughout that season, which was quite shocking. Then last year we had the week one matchup between the Lions and the Chiefs, which the Chiefs actually ended up losing to the Lions. And then the Lions would go on to have a fantastic season, one of their best in the last 35 years. Uh, but the Chiefs, at the end of the day, got the last laugh and still won another Super Bowl. So they find themselves in this Thursday night matchup once again against the Ravens. And now I do understand that in the last two years we've seen a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover, you could call it, from the defending champs in the opening night. But I think last year the game was very close and the Chiefs were missing two of their cornerstones in Travis Kelsey and in Chris Jones. And this year, yes, maybe not all of their offseason additions are at full health, but the core unit is intact, so we're going to see a pretty healthy Chiefs team, uh, minus Hollywood Brown, who they added in the offseason. But even then, you get the addition of Xavier Worthy, which should be a shiny new addition to this Chiefs offense. And on the Ravens side, you have this monster backfield, uh, led by Lamar Jackson, the best Tulsa quarterback in the league, and then Derrick Henry, um, absolute monster of a running back. So I think that the Chiefs defense is definitely going to have its hands full trying to figure out how to cover both of those guys at the same time. It's going to go for some nasty RPOs, but... We do have to address the Ravens' losses in their, you know, defensive side. You no longer have Geno Stone, you no longer have Patrick Queen. These were like Pro Bowl caliber players that are no longer with you. And the Chiefs' offense, since these two teams last met, I would like to say that they have gotten better. Maybe their defense has also gotten a bit worse. No more luxurious need. But I would venture out and say that the Chiefs are going to win this game. I think that the holes on the defensive side for the Ravens are more notable. Yes, they, they have still a very good decent defensive roster, but you know when these two teams matched up in the playoffs, the Ravens couldn't do it then. I don't think that they have gotten better since then. Um, as a whole, I think that they have gotten a little bit worse, whereas the Chiefs honestly might have gotten better uh, after winning a Super Bowl, which is always a scary sight, but it, it is what it is. And so yes, on Thursday night, I'm going with the Chiefs winning that matchup. Next up, we have a Friday night matchup, which is something I've never seen before. And this will be the first ever NFL game in Brazil. Uh, fun fact about this game, the NFL issued a warning to both teams saying that Brazil has a lot of gang-related violence, so uh, these teams need to be careful about wearing the color green, because green is a uh, pretty, you know, dangerous, I guess, in Brazil. And this wouldn't be an issue for probably 85% of the league. I I can only think of a handful of teams that actually wear green, but the NFL decided to have this matchup be between the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles, both teams that wear green. So it'll be pretty interesting to see how that pans out for the players. Hopefully everyone is safe and fine, but yeah, just real interesting decision there. Anywho, in this match,
catch up, we'll see. Here too, Jordan Love in this Packers squad that, you know, really exceeded expectations last year, especially towards the end of the year. Uh, won a playoff game versus an Eagles team, then went out a little bit flat. Flat footed and then lost one of its best players in Jason Kelsey. However, both teams have done some things to add to their offenses. On the Packers side, you've got new running back coming in. Out goes Aaron Jones, and in comes in Josh Jacobs, which not only is he younger, but he is one year removed from leading the NFL in rushing. So I think that he should be able to not return quite to full form as two years ago, but do a little bit better than he did last year. And now, this would be very exciting, but I do think it is a little bit overshadowed by the Eagles offseason addition to their backfield, uh, which was Saquon Barkley, and yeah, you, you're taking a team that had a top five offensive line. Now, obviously, they're going to take a hit uh, with no Jason Kelsey, but I think they still managed to stay in the top ten. Uh, you're putting Saquon Barkley behind it, and then you also have the addition of John Dotson as your wide receiver three. So the Eagles offense is looking very dangerous. They brought in offensive coordinator Kellen Moore, who loves a pass, like pass heavy, very fast paced offense. And I think that the Green Bay Packers defense is just going to be a little bit overwhelmed in this first matchup. Both teams, I think, will have phenomenal seasons and playoff berth, but it is a tall task to ask your defense to defend all of that in week one. So I'm going with an Eagles victory here, and yeah. <laughs> After that, we move into our Sunday slate. So our first matchup on Sunday morning will be between the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. And I honestly don't think that these two teams are as far as some may believe. Uh, I think that the Panthers' moves this offseason were quite nice, uh, and it should give them a big boost compared to where they were last year. So, the Saints, on the other hand, I don't think that uh, they had very many impressive moves that come to mind, but their offense will be very different under Clint Kubiak, new offensive coordinator. So, with that system, we'll see if they're able to be a little more efficient and productive than they were last year, because I don't think that the offense was as nice as people were hoping for it to be. Uh, yeah, since, since there's no data or rankings or records or anything like that to go off of in week one. It's basically just vibes, vibes and premonitions. And in this game, I think that the Saints just have more experience knowing what to do. You've got Derek Carr, who's been a quarterback in this league for a very long time, and he's not going to get any butterflies in his stomach opening up week one. Uh, Bryce Young, on the other hand, I think that, yeah, uh, the big big part of it is out of the way, going from college to the NFL, that is a big step, but now you do have to prove that this is a new year, stepping out to the field for the first time since being the worst team in the NFL, it can be a bit overwhelming, or just a bit, not necessarily overwhelming per se, but you might get caught off guard, you might just take him a few quarters to settle in. So, with that, I am expecting a Saints victory, but not a runaway victory. I do think that it'll be maybe between, like, one possession or ten points between these two teams. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, I am guessing a New Orleans win here. After that, we move into our second Sunday morning matchup, and this will be between the Minnesota Vikings and the New York Giants. Uh, the Giants, I think, are the recipients of a lot of heat as of late. Many people, including myself, have them finishing pretty poorly in this NFC. But the Vikings, on the other hand, they are battered and bruised. They have lost many people in this offseason. Some, some to just, you know, regular offseason loss.
causes the inside of their teams and just many many injuries uh, unfortunate un unpredictable injuries I will leave a couple over here because maybe it's best not to talk about some of them they're much more tragic than others but yeah the injury bug has hit the Vikings incredibly hard and I feel for them but this is one of those matchups where I think that the Giants can win they definitely can win um you have Sam Darnold starting for the Vikings and I don't think that we've ever seen Sam Darnold do that well in the league um there's a reason why he has been demoted to this backup status and the Giants regardless of what you think of Daniel Jones or anything like that I think that they can definitely beat a injured Vikings team like this is not even a full strength team that they're playing against they get to play at home uh, they have their own fan base to cheer for their new star wide receiver I think this is the one of the few times where spirits might actually be high for the Giants fan base and all of these people and for the Vikings it's it's okay I think the offseason has been tough everyone has already tempered their expectations for this season it's not going to be an enjoyable season it's not even their fault they the Vikings front office and people did nothing wrong it's just your, your quarterback of the future is already out for the whole year so you take it on the chin and you move forward and yeah I'm expecting a Giants victory there next up we've got a matchup between the New England Patriots and the Cincinnati Bengals um, even as a Patriots fan myself I don't think that there's anything I could say to cook up a Patriots victory here I was perusing on Twitter the other day and there was a Patriots fan page pretty well known one that I see pretty often talking about how a week from today the Patriots are going to win by three points against the Bengals and uh yeah, I don't want to sign myself up for any disappointment like that. The, I don't know, the good news, the bad news, it depends how you view it, what team you're a part of, what teams you like or don't like. Uh, Jamar Chase's contract situation is still yet to be figured out. He wants a pay raise to be one penny above his former LSU wide receiver buddy, Justin Jefferson. And he has non-committal on, you know, being out there week one for this Bengals team. Now, unfortunately for the Patriots, I don't think it matters. I think even with Jermaine Burton and T. Higgins, they're going to do away with this Patriots roster that is being led by Jacoby Brissett and new head coach Tron Mayo. Um, so, yeah, luckily, the Bengals, I don't think they're going to be too short-handed, like Obviously, it's a big deal that Jamar Chase might not be out there, but for him to not be there, this is one of the best teams to be playing in that week. So, Bengals got lucky there. Um, as for the contract situation, I do think Jamar Chase is asking for a little too much. Justin Jefferson has earned every penny of that contract, and I see why Chase wants to outdo his old buddy, but... Realistically, Jamar Chase does not have the accolades or credentials to back up the contract that he's talking about. I get that, like, his rookie year, he outproduced Justin Jefferson, but in the other years since then, if you take the numbers and put them up one next to another, I don't think that he's actually done better. Um, and Justin Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the game, and he has paid as the best wide receiver in the game. Jamar, realistically, should do what's best for his team and accept a million or two million less. Like, Because at the end of the day, do you want to win Super Bowls or do you want to make more money than your friend? Like, <laughs> I, I feel like his priorities are a little bit in the wrong place here. 
CD you got paid and uh, Ayuk got paid and yes, Justin Jefferson got that contract. I don't think that you need to hold out, like, yes, get your money, but if it's gone to the point where you're going to miss games, then you have lost a lot. Um, it rarely works out. I guess one of the few times where it did work out was Chris Jones last year. Chris Jones did not play because of a similar reason, and when they lost, that kind of helped them. So, if the Patriots somehow stun the Bengals here, maybe they get that Jamar Chase deal worked out, because obviously you need him, uh, but realistically, I think that the Bengals win by double digits there. After that, we move into a matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Atlanta Falcons. Um, this one is interesting. You have both teams under new regimes. Uh, Steelers not in the coaching department, but more so their offense. Now being led by Russell Wilson. And then for the Falcons, they have new coaching staff. Uh, but also with that, they have a new quarterback in Kirk Cousins. And I think as far as change goes, the Falcons are enduring more. So new head coach, new quarterback, that's already a lot to take in. But we also factor in Kirk's injury. Um, he is not just joining a new team like Russell Wilson is. He is coming off a major injury. And so, even though quarterback play in the preseason from the Steelers was underwhelming, I do think that the Steelers have a good shot at winning this game. Just because most of their unit from last year to this year is intact. Mike Tomlin is a very good NFL coach, in my opinion. I think that he knows how to deal, and the Falcons just have more to figure out. So, week one could be a bit shaky. Maybe Kirk needs to get off his rust. Obviously, big coaching changes, so they're going to have to figure out their identity as a football team. Whereas, I think that the Steelers will be able to accomplish what they need. Uh, and get it done versus this Falcons team. I don't think that it's going to be necessarily the prettiest, but I do think that the Steelers get a victory here in, a vic in week one. Next up, we have a matchup between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts, two divisional teams. Um, this should be fun. I think that this will be a fun game just because you have guy who did the best out of all the rookie quarterbacks last year, and then a guy who started off the year very well, but then went down quickly, and now we, we really have to wait to see our first year of Anthony Richardson and the squad sled team, so uh, the Texans, everyone's very high on them, they're, they're kind of like being elevated to that contender type of title, and it may be a bit premature, but for sure the division leader and a lot of people's Super Bowl favorite as well. Uh, whereas the Colts, I think that people are excited to see what Anthony Richardson has to offer, but it is still a bit unpolished, unrefined. He didn't look the sharpest in the preseason, and yes, we take that with a grain of salt because it is the preseason. We also had, I forget which team, maybe it was the Bengals. Uh, talking about how Anthony Richardson cannot throw the ball. And I just chalk that up to trash talk. They're going to say whatever they want to get under the opponent's skin. Uh, and I'm not buying into that. I do think that Anthony Richardson will be quite nice. And he'll be good this season. But I don't think that they're going to be able to do anything in this first game. Uh, and if I say not be able to do anything. I don't mean that they're going to be horrible. I just think that at the end of the day, the Texans are going to be better. Um, they just, they're an exciting team. They added Stephon Diggs, they added Joe Mixon, um, and the Colts. They got Adonai Mitchell, and they're getting their quarterback back, but yeah, there's a lot to be excited about the Texans. There's a lot of hype surrounding them, and yeah, we do have 
to see how Anthony Richardson looks health-wise, so I'm gonna go with the Texans' victory out here uh, to start off the year. After that, we have a matchup between the Arizona Cardinals and the Buffalo Bills. Um, and in previous years, I do think that this is like an easy win for the Bills, or I guess last year I would say so. Um, I don't know if this is actually that easy of a game. Looking at the Cardinals' offense, it is pretty young, and we don't know what we have with it, but Kyler Murray is back. You've now got Marvin Harrison Jr. You've got Michael Wilson, who's hopefully held up. Greg Dorch, Trey McBride. Um, and for the Bills, a lot of questionable players that they've got in the rotation now. Gabe Davis out, Stephon Diggs out, a lot of their defense out. Um, but you bring in Keon Coleman, you bring in Curtis Samuel, you kind of elevate Khalil Shakur. Uh, it's a lot of change at the end of the day. You know, <laughs> all BS aside, I do think that the Bulls will win, sorry, the Bills will win this game. Uh, but I think it'll be close. I don't think that'll be easy. I think this will be down to the last two possessions type of game. Kyler Murray and Josh Allen really battling it out. I think it'll be close. Um, the Bills, I think they do benefit from playing at home here. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think that this Cardinals team is going to be a joke or to be messed around with. There's no cakewalk for the Bills. I think that the Bills going to feel every one of those off-season losses, and they're going to have to scrape their way to a victory out here. Uh, but I think when it's all said and done, they will be able to manage. After that, we've got a matchup between the Tennessee Titans and the Chicago Bears. And I don't know, I think like every year I pick the Titans to lose in week one, and they somehow don't. So I'm kind of I know that there was a year where the Titans and the Browns were supposed to play in week one, and I was like, oh yeah, obviously the Browns. And the Titans took it. So, I guess in the back of my mind, I'm afraid that the Titans will win. I want to say that the Bears win. I like their team more. I like, I kind of do like Caleb Williams, uh, I don't know why I have to say kind of. He, I'm rooting for Caleb William. I think that he looks like a cool prospect. Everything in preseason looked cool. His time at USC was very nice. The Bears, I want to be excited about the Bears. It would be very cool to see this team do well for Caleb Williams to destroy all of those like rookie records that are there. Is it realistic for me to expect it? No, but I want to see it happen. Uh, the Titans, on the other hand, this is a very winnable game for them. It's not a, you know, a well-established team with a good quarterback or anything like that. There's a lot of unknowns for this Bear team. They've never actually gone out as a team and done anything yet. Whereas the Titans, it is a pretty similar team. Uh, no more Derrick Henry, of course. You have Tony Pollard in, but Will Levis did play a good stretch of last season. And now he is coming in with a little more help uh, with you adding Calvin Ridley to his wide receiver room and Tyler Boyd, a new offense, not offense, new head coach for the Titans. But maybe that consistency will show up here. I do think that this is going to be a tough year for the Titans. And this is honestly like a very winnable game for them. Um... Bears. I'm gonna go Bears anyway. I would like to see a week one Bears victory. I think that even for the Bears, this is one of your easier games where I don't think that the Titans have much to be afraid of. Uh, Will Levis is still pretty unpolished. Not like he's on the bottom cusp of quarterbacks out there. So you can take advantage with your defense, you can take advantage offensively. Uh, I guess the Titans defense
Lens does have quite a few new pieces that I think are pretty good, but uh, man, I guess this is a tough matchup. It's tough for me to decide because I've been let down so many times of betting against Titans. Do I change it? for the sake of it. Let's go, let's go Titans, let's go Titans in week one. Uh, you know, first round quarterbacks, how often do they actually end up winning their first game? I feel like the number one overall pick goes out and loses in the first week more often than not. Anyways, there's just a lot to figure out for the Bears, and yeah, I guess the Titans defense has a lot. There's more consistency on the Titans side of the ball. This might be one of the few games that the Titans have an advantage in, uh, and yeah, I'm expecting that the Bears team will figure it out and will be very good, but week one, let's just, let's just give it to the Titans, even though I don't want to, and it, after that, we've got a matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Miami Dolphins, a battle of Florida, as you could call it, and This is one where I think that the Dolphins have a clear edge in. They made the playoffs last year. They still got pretty much everyone on, on the offensive side of the ball. You still have Tyreek Hill. You still have Jalen Waddle. I think that they'll both be ready and suited up to play. Tua has lost a decent amount of weight. Uh, I, I don't know how that's going to affect his game, really. It's just something that exists. Um, We'll have to see how that translates onto the field. Uh, the Jaguars, on the other hand, they did lose Calvin Ridley, and that could affect their offense, but they do bring in Gabe Davis, they bring in Brian Thomas Jr., and so, in this game, I think the Dolphins are just, they've got a unit that's pretty close to last year's, and they usually start off the year hot. I'm going to give it to them when on their home stadium. Obviously, their home field advantage doesn't matter as much against a team like the Jaguars, who plays in a very similar climate and environment in Florida itself. Um, but the Dolphins are a bit of a better team, so I'll give it to them. Then we have a matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, we saw this game two years ago, opening week as well, when it was Russell Wilson's Broncos against the Geno Smith-led Seattle Seahawks, and Geno Smith actually won that game. That's where we got the infamous quote, um, you know, they wrote me off, I am right back though, and I think Geno Smith is going to be bringing that same energy week one here. We've got the new offense under Ryan Grubb. Uh, I feel like I've just been spamming the same words in all my videos, but truly I think that's something to look out for for the Seahawks. I think the Broncos, they've got Bo Nix, but Bo Nix is going to have to adjust to playing against, like, first-team defenses and things like that. So it's... Oh, and the 12th, the 12th man playing in Seattle in your first game, I do think that is probably not ideal for a rookie quarterback. So, I'm going to go ahead and say that Seattle takes this one. Uh, after that, you've got a matchup between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, and here we have the Chargers starting Gardner Minshew in week one, making the switch from Ian O'Connell. And on the Chargers side, we have... Uh, head coach Jim Harbaugh that is going to be taking over for them and yeah I think that the head coaching decisions here Antonio Pierce I'm glad that they stayed with him I think that the Chargers I'm glad that they moved on from Brandon Saley and I think that is really great that they're able to bring in Jim Harbaugh these are winning moves for them now coming down to the offenses obviously clear advantage in the wide receiver department to the Raiders. I think that defensively the Chargers have a lot of big names but the Raiders 
players as the defense might have done slightly better last year. Uh, you know, being anchored by Max Crosby and Jack Jones is really good. <laughs> I, it's one of those losses that does kind of sting um, as a Patriots fan because Jack Jones got involved in that gun stuff and they had to cut him, but he is still really a nice player. So a shame that we had to let him go. But what was I saying? I'm trying to figure out. Oh, Joe Alt. Joe Alt is a big addition for this Chargers team. And yeah, maybe the wide receivers are not the best. I think running backs, you're probably about even. But quarterback play, huge favor uh, to the Chargers here. Carter Minshew, it does not really stack up against Justin Herbert in any way. So I'm going to give it to the Chargers for that in this week. After that, we've got a matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns. Uh, and I think that this will be a pretty good game. Two teams that went into the playoffs last year. Two teams that I personally don't have going back to the playoffs this year. Even though that might ruffle a few feathers. Uh, talk about you Cowboys fans. But, yeah. Um, pretty disappointing playoff exits. And I think that they're going to try and come out with statement victories each both have a lot on the line Deshaun Watson trying to really make a mark as you know the quarterback for this team we have not seen him do anything with this Browns team as of yet since being on the roster and the Cowboys you have to back up everything that you said in the offense you, or in the offseason you said that you were all in it didn't look like you were all in, but if you can come out and get a victory, then maybe at least for one week people will stay quiet about, you know, maybe the not more, maybe not the most eventful of off seasons. Um, so yeah, it really just comes down to which team is not even playing to win, but playing not to lose. Um, and I think here we do have a slight advantage to the Cowboys just based on health. Um, Deshaun Watson going down once again with injury. I think that it's not a good look. He is kind of injury prone. We haven't seen him finish the season in quite a while. And yeah, he did take a lot of time off and the Cowboys are just more put together at the moment. Um, so yeah, even though the Browns defense is very elite, Cowboys offense was equally just as elite last year, finishing as like the top scoring team in the NFL. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give it to the Cowboys there. After that, we've got the Washington Commanders facing off against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, and I think that this game will be pretty close. Um, with the new Jaden Daniels Washington team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing at home mostly with the same roster and everything. I mean, they just won in the playoffs. They went to the playoffs and then they won a playoff game. Uh, how's their ground against Detroit for some time? Not doing long, but, you know, they, they were very commendable underdog last year. I don't think anyone expected them to do as well as they did, but now they've gained a little confidence, and I haven't seen Baker pop his top yet, you know, I feel like on the Browns, there was the same cycle of Baker Mayfield, where it was like, maybe I can find the meme, but it's like, underrated status, gets an unexpected victory, hypes up the team, plays horrible, and it was just a never-ending cycle, um, I haven't seen him hype up the team like that, I have not seen anything that scares me, I do think that they're still playing kind of humbly. I have not, um, even though I really like Baker, Baker Mayfield's personality and all of that, it's for the best that he's not in the spotlight of the media. I think that they're better off if they're operating in the shadows, at a, in silence, you know? Don't attract too much attention to your team. Try and, like, sneak your way into the playoffs again. I think that's the formula for success. And yeah, I think that the Buccaneers, they they just have the tools for 
from last year to this year. Um, you're playing with a rookie on the commander side. I think it's always hard for a rookie to go out and get a victory in week one. So, so far, I've had all of the rookies lose, and I'm going to continue that with the commanders. I have the Buccaneers winning this game. Then, we've got a very nice Sunday night matchup between the LA Rams and the Detroit Lions. Now, we just saw this in the playoffs. It's going to be Matthew Stafford versus Jared Goff. Uh, honestly, that game was so close. It's, it's going to be fun. I gotta go Lions here. I think that the Lions... They were just so close to everything last year. And to keep that offensive coordinator is a big deal. Uh, the Rams, with health, they... They look to be pretty good this season as well. But losing Aaron Donald, I think, is kind of major. And even with Aaron Donald, you couldn't pull out the victory last postseason, and yeah, all things considered, I don't think that the Lions got that much worse. I think they're trying to ad address the secondary. I think, nonetheless, with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, you're gonna get thrown all over anyways. Um, but, yeah, the Lions, they extended everyone important on their offense, and I think that they're looking to make a similar run this year. I'm gonna give them the victory and get another close game. And then, lastly, Monday night, we are going to have some deja vu, some flashbacks to last year with the Jets playing on Monday night against, this time, the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, <laughs> if I'm a Jets fan, I'm mad. I'm fuming mad that this is what the NFL has done to me. Uh, not only do you have to worry about Aaron Rodgers playing in a Monday night game, it's like, it's too much deja vu, uh, but also you have to play against one of the best teams in the NFL, this is a team that just went to the Super Bowl and like barely lost it, and so, yeah, obviously as a Jets fan, you want to be optimistic and say, we are a contender, we are very good, and while I think all of those things are true, this is like ultimate trial by fire, so if the Jets go out and win this game, you know, hats off to them, but I am absolutely not expecting it. I think that the 49ers get the victory here. Uh, Aaron Rodgers still has not played more than four snaps in a Jets uniform. So, we don't know what his chemistry is like with any of the offense. We don't know what his injury status is like, uh, if his age is getting to him. Whereas the 49ers, they were, like, very close to winning the Super Bowl one of the best rosters, if not the best roster in the NFL. Um, and yeah, they didn't even lose anyone that major. Obviously, Brandon Ayuk was the talk of the offseason with him saying that, like, he didn't want to be there, and then obviously he did want to be there, and then he stayed. Um, but yeah, I think that the 49ers do win this one, and hopefully the Jets are able to keep it competitive, but like, you know, no no one blames you for losing this one. I think that this is extremely hard. Honestly, it doesn't matter who the 49ers are matched up against in week one. It's going to be hard to see them losing. I think they just are extremely strong on a week-to-week -week basis. There's only a few teams that you would ever say could do it. If the Jets come out really strong offensively, maybe, because their defense is great. Um, but I don't think that the Jets' offense is going to be good enough to take down this 49ers defense just yet. So I'm going to go with the 49ers. So yeah, with that, we have our Week 1 predictions finalized. Uh, once again, I'll go through all of them real quick. I've got the Chiefs over the Ravens. I've got the Eagles over the Packers. I've got the Saints over the Panthers. I have the 
Seahawks over the Broncos, the Chargers over the Raiders, the Cowboys over the Browns, the Buccaneers over the Commanders, the Lions over the Rams, and the 49ers over the Jets. So, those are all my predictions for week one. Comment down below. Tell me what you think is uh, winning or losing if you disagree with any of these takes. Honestly, like, there's nothing to go off for these. It's, it's all completely made up, so I'm willing to hear out your arguments, and honestly, I might be persuaded. Like, you saw how much I struggled with the Titans and Bears. I don't feel strongly about some of these. Uh, but yeah, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. I would be, I'll definitely be making more of these going forward. This will be a weekly staple. Uh, still trying to figure out my schedule once I'm available in school. Because basically, I have this week. Then I have one more week where I'm at home. Following that, I will be kind of traveling, I guess you could say, for a week. Uh, and then the week after, I will be in school, but school will not have started yet. And then I'll be in actual school, attending school once again. So, uh, the next few weeks, we'll see how I do. Um, as far as making videos and posting them in a timely, orderly fashion, it might be a little bit here or there. Uh, this is week one, week two, I'm expecting that to be pretty solid. Week three and four, you might see a little bit of like jumbled aroundness. And then week five onwards, it should be pretty stable. So uh, that's what I'm saying now. We'll see if that's actually true. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.